Alrighty, my friends, welcome to another video here. My name is Bijan T for those of you that don't know. And if you don't know, it's probably because you're new here. So if you are new here, make sure you subscribe, click the button. There's going to be a button somewhere that you can click. So first of all, before I jump into it, I want to like kind of apologize a little bit for being a little MIA. I mentioned in my last video uh, that I wouldn't be making as many YouTube videos. And I'm still not quite back yet. Uh, I'm just making this video because I kind of promised people on Instagram that I would do this trade recap. Uh, I've just been enjoying life. It's summertime, you know what I mean? I've been traveling a lot, so I kind of want to just, you know, not have the pressure of, oh, you got to make a video, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be too late. Oh, the you guys get what I'm trying to say. So I've just been kind of enjoying life a little bit. Uh, but I want to go over, uh, it's going to be two trades that we're going to be going over in this video because mainly I promised my followers on Instagram that I would do a trade recap on yesterday's trade. But we ended up going out to dinner and I didn't have a chance to, you know, make the video and all that. So. That's what I want to do today. I want to make the video that I promised them that I would make. But then there's always going to be those people that are going to say, oh, no, scams. He's not talking about today's trade. There must be something there. But, you know, you guys know how people are. Uh, just balls of negativity, some people. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to also go over today's trade as well. But the main one that I want to kind of touch base on is yesterday's trade. So and before I before I just jump in, I got to show you guys the view. This, I mean, it's, it's amazing, guys. And, and I don't show you guys this stuff to make you jealous or to kind of flex on anybody. I do it because I want to motivate people. I want you guys to know, first of all, anyone can do it. And I want you guys looking at me like saying, if this guy can do it, I can do it. I'm like, like look, at, look at this guy. If he can do it, I can do it. Like, look at his teeth. He doesn't even have straight teeth. You guys get what I'm saying anyways. Uh, so look at this view, guys. Just got to peep the scene. I don't know if this laptop camera will, like shows any of it, but you just got life, beauty, sun. Man, what a life, guys. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Okay, let's just jump right into this trade recap now. All righty, so the first trade is going to be uh, GS that we traded, and then the next trade is going to be the Qs that we traded. Uh, I, I call them the Qs, the QQQ. Um, so the Qs was a $920 profit today, and then the GS, well, of course, it's not going to show it because it was yesterday. It clears the profit at the end of the day. Um, but it was a $1,590 profit yesterday on this GS. So first things first, let me make sure everything is proper here. We got everything, everybody, everybody here. Okay, good. Yeah, I already had everybody set. So first we're going to go over the GS. Then we're going to go over the QQQ. And that's, that's pretty much that. I'm not going to try and get too crazy with this video. But knowing me, because I haven't made a video in a while, I'm probably going to go off on a bunch of random, you know, rambles and all of that. So we'll see a, what we get with a, you know, time length on this video. So first off, GS, uh, I was trading puts. Puts means you, so look, I was trading puts yesterday, then calls today. This just goes to show that a, a good trader knows how to flip the script. He's not, you know, he doesn't formulate a bias. Oh yeah, no, the market's tanking. It's the end of the world. No, I mean, you get what I'm trying to say? And we also don't say, oh yeah, it's going to, we're going to skyrocketing. We, we trade what we see. You get what I'm trying to say? So puts means you make money when the stock goes down. Now, the reason why I say these things is because I have a lot of people that are beginners and new to trading, just learning about trading, just hearing about trading that watch my videos. So they might get confused on some of these things. Some people, there's a lot of people I run into that didn't know that you can make money on the value of a stock going down. So that's why I like to emphasize these little things. So puts means you make money when the stock goes down. Calls means you make money when the stock goes up. Now, one thing I want you guys to notice is that I'm trading a September 20th expiration date here on both of them actually. And there's a few reasons for that. One is just because we're uh, we're in summertime. You know, we're in lower volume situations. Uh, you know. People go on vacation. They're not trading as much. Just for example, me, myself. Not, I'm not saying I'm not trading, but look at me. I'm going on on vacation. I'm not, you know, I, like, like I, I don't know what the word is, but I'm not just like every single morning, oh, I got to be there, got to do this. You get what I'm trying to say? Like there's some days where I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to sleep in a little. I will sleep in a little. There's some days where I'm like, all right, you know what? We want to wake up and go out and get some breakfast and get the day started and enjoy this nice place that we're at. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, and I, I usually pick summertime to do that because of the fact that everybody else picks that time to do that, and the market usually slows down. Like I mentioned in my previous video, the sell in May, go away idea. So there's lower volume, which means, you know, we're also in like kind of a choppier situation. And also, we've been taking a little bit of time to make certain moves. So I was, I was willing to swing trade uh, these plays, specifically the QQQ, I was willing to swing trade. The GS was mainly a morning momentum trade. But I knew that I might have to hold it a little bit, and I didn't want to get hit with, uh, you know, time decay and all of that. 
So again, like I said, just a few various reasons. But the thing is with time and expirations is that the more you get, the better. It's not going to hurt you. Yeah, you might have to put more money down or put more money in or, or have a your trade might cost more money to you know make a certain amount of money as opposed to trading a current week or a next week expiration date. But it, it doesn't matter for me, you know, and, and this goes for everybody that's a trader. Maybe when you first start trading, you're like, oh, yeah, I only have like three, five, ten thousand dollars in my account. But once you consistently start making money as a trader and as long as you have proper risk management, I'm sorry, proper money management and you don't just go blowing all your money, you're going to get to a point where you have a bunch of money. You know what I'm saying? It's just sitting there. So why not? You know, and it's not like it's, not like it's going to be an issue. For example, this GS trade, it, it took there was about seven thousand, I think seven thousand fifty to be exact, that went into the trade. I could have done the same trade and made the same profit with probably half the investment if I went with the current week expiration, but it, it doesn't really matter to me and it doesn't matter to anyone else because it's not like you're hurting yourself by getting more time. Maybe it costs a little more, but that's that. So more time doesn't hurt. That's like one idea that I just want to talk about there. So GS, like I said, the cost of the trade was about 7050 If you do the, ma the math on it, the way options goes for any beginners, one is equivalent to 100. So if it looks like it's 470, it's actually 470 for one. So I had 15 of them. So you do the math 15 times 470, you get 7,050. Then about 25 minutes later, I sold all 15 of them. For, there's two ways you can look at this. You can say, okay, so he got in for 470, then sold it for 570. It was 576, but we'll just say 570 for the sake of simplicity here. So that's a $100 profit on each one. So you go into 100 times 15 because I had 15 contracts here. And that's how you get a $1,500 profit. Like I said, it was $1,590 to be exact because of the 76. We can do the math. Let's do it. The other way to do it is by multiplying 15 times 576 which gives you 8640 Subtract that from the cost of the trade, which was 7050 That's where you get the 1590 So that was the profit on the Goldman, 1590 We were trading puts, which means you make money when the stock goes down. So as the value of the stock went down, the value of our puts went up. And we did that within about 25 minutes, 30 minutes. That was a quick morning momentum trade. So let me go over that for you guys here real quick, and then we'll go talk about the cues, which was a little bit more. It was still a day trade, but it was one I was willing to swing trade it if I needed to. Um, but I also knew it was something that was. It's going to take a little bit more time. You see what I'm saying? So you have to know your conditions here. So this, yeah, I'm going to put them on a one minute. Yeah, perfect. We can still see. I actually have the little lines marked still. There we go. Because I was going to make the video for you guys yesterday, but I just never got the chance to. So, anyways. This is the 640 that I got in, and this right here is the 704 that I had gotten out. 640, 704, there we have it. So I got in. Now, first things first, I didn't get the exact top, nor did I get the exact bottom. See, he went all the way down to 196.58. He was all the way up at 101, 101.5 at the beginning of the day. So I didn't get the exact top, I didn't get the exact bottom. And that's not what we shoot for. Anybody that really like stresses themselves out and kills themselves to make sure they get the top or the bottom, it's, they're going to have a hard time with trading. You just have to have a plan, have a strategy, have some risk management, and you'll be on your way. So I got in it at the break of the 200, which is right here, like I say, the 640. So as soon as it broke the 200, that's where I got in. And as a matter of fact, one of the strategies, again, you know, like what? The way I teach in my course isn't just one strategy. It's multiple different ideas and concepts and strategies that we use to tie in. You know, how do I say this? I use my robber example. You might have heard it before. I say if a robber wants to go and rob your house in the middle of the night, if he takes a cell phone flashlight, he's only going to find your TVs on the wall. But if he puts a headlamp on and takes a cell phone flashlight, well, now he might find your TVs and your laptops and your computers. But let's say he takes a cell phone light and a headlamp and a huge like handheld floodlight. Well, now he might find your TVs, your computers, your laptops, your tablets, your safe, your jewelry box, all that. You see what I'm saying? So the more flashlights, the more chances of success that you have. So one of the, the flashlights, and it's actually one of the things that I've even taught for free in my live webinars that I've done in my webinars in the past, was one of the strategies that worked out here. Along with a few other things, like the market was also pulling back and all that. So like I say, multiple different strategies tied into one. That's, you know, how you make, you know, uh, well, that's my, my style again. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's different. So one of the strategies that I even taught for free in my live webinars was one of them that even ended up working out right here as well too. 
But unfortunately, there's a lot of people, and I say this, it's, I'm serious. We had, you know, I would say at least like 25 to 30 percent of the people that attended the webinars were focused on the wrong things. They were like, oh my God, is this live? This isn't live. Hold up a spoon if this is like, who cares? You see what I'm trying to say? Some people, they're, they're, they're misguided. I don't know what's wrong with them because you really have to think about it. Is the content going to be any different whether it's live or not? No. Whatever comes out of my mouth is going to be the same thing. But some people want to get all bent out of shape focusing on, is this live? Is this not live? Somebody tell me, what, somebody raise their hand. Somebody say what's two plus two. Like, who cares? But again, that's the that's the world we live in. And these are the kind of people that vote. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, this, before I get sidetracked. So that was one of the strategies. Got in at the break of the 200 here as well. That's where I got in. And then I got out right here. My main profit target was the 198. And then I wanted to see if I can maybe get the 197.5 area as well. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get it to the 197.5 area. I was, uh, you know, it broke below the 198 a few times actually, but I was still holding because I was also doing something that I like to call lowering my stops. So for example, I got in, let's just make it for the sake of the example. I said, I'm in at 200. I want the stock to go down to 198. If I'm wrong and it goes up to 10, let's just say 200.50, then I'll get out and I'll take that small loss. It's like I'm risking 50 cents to make $2 in a sense. You get what I'm trying to say here? So, well, I don't even know what I was going on that whole tangent about. Um, I, I was just going to mention the idea of lowering stops. So lowering stops basically says, let's say my initial stop was 200.50, meaning if it went back above the 200.50, I would have gotten out and taken the small loss. But once it got to a certain level, now I... I brought it down. I said, okay, now if we go above the 200, I'll get out. So if I was wrong, I would have broken even pretty much. And then I lowered it even more. And I said, okay, if we go above the 199, I'll get out. And you guys get what I'm saying? That's the idea of lowering stops. At the end of the day, you're still going to be profitable as long as you respect your plan. So I was doing that idea as well. But then I realized, all right, you know what? We're in choppy situations. This was a morning momentum trade. I want to get out while I still have the momentum, while I have that like that 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 premium. You get what I'm trying to say? I didn't want to wait for the stock to start, you know, just chopping and lingering around more. So that's why I said, all right, you know what? Let's just get out of it right here. And this is where I got out of it. It was right around the 197.80 area when I got out. So 470 is what the value of that option was worth right here. And as the value of the stock went down, the value of the option went up to 476 right here. And obviously it could have been more if I got the bottom, but hey, we don't worry about that kind of stuff. We came in, we got our profit, $1,500 in 25 minutes. I mean, come on guys, it's, it's, it's fantastic. And I closed out the trade and then I went on with the rest of my day to enjoy this beautiful place. You know what I'm saying? Now, some issues arise when people get too confident now and they're like, oh wow, I had a great trade. Let me place another one, then another one, then another one. And they're trading emotionally. They didn't plan to tr place all these trades. That's where you know issues happen. So you have to have an emotional control on yourself too to trade your plan and only your plan. You get what I'm saying? So, so before I start getting sidetracked there again, um, I also mentioned this in the chat room as well. Um, where am I at here? I don't want to bring it up. We'll worry about it later. But I, even in the chat room, I was like, all right, it was at 7.05, I specifically said um, something along the lines of if anybody still, if anyone caught that Goldman uh, break off of the, whatchamacallit, I don't know what I was saying, it, it was, I said off of the 200, you want to take in and lock in your profits here, uh, and that's right there at that area, and I said at least lock in some profits, so uh, well, this trade, I mentioned it in the chat room as well, but I don't know why I even brought that up, so now that that was the Goldman trade. I don't think I missed anything on that. So real quickly, let me go touch base on today's trade, the Qs, and then we'll wrap up this video here for you guys. So today, the Qs, we had, like I said, a $920 profit. We were, let me, it just makes it easier just to have one. There we go. So I had 20 contracts on the Qs, and I sold 20 contracts. This one was a bit of a longer trade. I basically placed the trade. I had my stops. I had my alerts set, and then I went off. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know what I was up to do. I was at this like little, they have like a sauna, spa type thing, and you know, I'm not trying to sound all bougie and whatnot. This, I just don't come from this kind of lifestyle, so I'm just trying to like you know enjoy it as much as I can. You know what I mean? I'm not the type that you know, oh yeah, let's go to enjoy the spa and the sauna and the this and the that. But you know, I wanted to go hang out and kind of see what life had to offer and you know just enjoy that kind of stuff. So that's what I was doing, and I closed out the trade from my phone as well. Uh, but you know, it, what my point is comparing both the trades is one, one was a quick morning momentum trade, one was a day trade. Now this one. It's a calls. We were trading calls, which means you make money when the stock goes up. 
So you got to be willing to flip the script. And again, I had a further out expiration date. You know, I didn't have a current week. I didn't have a, you know, next week because of the fact that I won. I knew I was going to hold it throughout the day. I was going to hold it for some time. I knew it might take a little bit of time to get the move. I knew it wasn't going to instantly just happen right away. And I knew I might even have to hold it overnight. You get what I'm saying? So let's just touch base on this guy real quick. 807, I was in it. 1240, I was out. And 807, uh, here we go, here we go as well. The reason why I didn't do any other trades early in the morning is because nothing lined up to my plan. There wasn't really anything exciting that I saw. So I was like, all right, well, that's that. Let's leave it. I had initially, from the watch list, I was watching the SPY, and I wanted to get calls on the SPY, but the problem was we gapped up too high, and I'm like, I'm not buying this thing all the way up here, blah, 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 blah. So that's why I just kind of let it sit. Now, the QQQ and the SPY is the same exact thing. Look at the chart. I mean, they do the same thing. Boom, right here at 7.05, it dropped, and then it reverses. And you get what I'm trying to say? And Just look at them. They're the same thing. Well, there we go. You see? 7.05, it dropped, and then it reverses, and it just lingers, and blah, 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 blah. So they're the same thing. I was initially watching SPY. Uh, then I went with the Qs, just because the premium on the Qs and the spread on the options and everything was a lot more favorable. I liked it better. The volume was better and all that, so... Uh, again, this is all just stuff that I talk about in my course. If you guys are like, want all the details and everything. I mean, look, we're already 16 minutes here. We'd be here for like years, hours. That's why the course is the way it is. It's, you know, anyways, I don't want to be advertising the course. That's not the whole point of this. Uh, so just talking about the cues here. So I was in it at, what was it? 8.07 to 12.40. So 8.07, let's just throw it down real quick. 8.07 somewhere along, where are we at here? You got above this area right here. Here we have them. That's the 807 that I got in at, 1240 that I got out. Oh, right there at the, if this little guy didn't happen, it would have been the exact top. But hey, like I say, we don't focus on getting the exact top or the exact bottom. We just take our move and, you know, we, you, just, you enjoy yourself. That's pretty much that. So I basically got in here right around the uh, 187.25 area, and I had my profit target on the 188.50. Uh, again, 188 to 188.50. Um you know, I was watching it and I saw, you know, a few things. Again, I te all this stuff, I, I saw, okay, hold on. He's like, he's not really getting above that area. And that's where I took my profit. I, close enough. I mean, well, I was like 12, 10 cents off of, uh, you know, my secondary profit target there. So I was like, all right, let's just lock it in. I could have held it overnight. It looks like we might even gap up tomorrow. But hey, I'm not worried about it. If we gap up tomorrow, we gap up tomorrow. Fantastic. Good for anybody that might have held it overnight. If not, hey, I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to get all mad and bent out of shape saying, oh, man, this and that. So, this one was a really quick one, really nothing to talk about. I kind of talked about all the expiration and everything. Uh, if you want to look at like the cost of the trade and everything, you can do, again, two types of scenarios. You can say, all right, so he was in it for 332, and then he sold it for 378. So what's the difference? 332 minus 378, that's 46 cents. I'm sorry. Well, yeah, 46 cents, but $46 on each one. I had 20 of them. Multiply basically... 46 times 20, that's how you get $920 there. Or you can do it the other way where you say, okay, so he had 20 contracts, 20 times 300, uh, and where are we at? 332, which is 6,640. And then he sold it for 378 times 20, which is 7,560. So 7,560 minus 6,640, again, that's, uh, like I said, it's just various ways of calculating it. You get $920 profit. And again, like I say, guys, these small profits add up. You get what I'm saying? I had a small loss on Friday. It was a $300, $350 loss. I posted it on my Instagram story. Uh, but the other profits that week were, the other trades that week were profitable. Just like this week. We got profit, profit. Yeah, I might take a loss this week. We only have two more days. One more day this week, actually, tomorrow. And then Friday, obviously, you know, I have my rule that I don't trade on Fridays. We'll see if I break that rule again. Uh, but you see what I'm trying to say, guys? You know, all, you, all it takes is one trade here, one trade there. You don't have to trade a million different things. You know, these small profits add up. Stick to your plan. Stay disciplined. And that's pretty much that, guys. So we'll wrap it up here. Again, subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Who's Bijan T. If you guys do want to join our chat room or the watch or our watch list, or you want to take my course or learn how to trade or anything like that, I'll put the link in the description below. You can go ahead and get all the information on that there. And that's pretty much that, guys. We'll pretty much wrap it up here. Just as like a random idea, I was asking people on Instagram if they wanted to hear other things from me, like other topics of me to talk about. Because, you know, I, I do more than just trading in life, you know. Um, 
Let me know in the comments below. Go ahead and comment. Yeah, I want to hear you talk more about college or why you went to college or real estate or cars or why this and that. Let me know. Uh, maybe I'll start making some other videos here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. We'll wrap it up here and I will talk to you all soon.